Hello everyone, welcome back to Dragonfly Engineering. So this week we've got a pretty interesting project. We've got a part conveying and collating system that I had to bring online uh, to facilitate bringing molded parts from the large dual shot molding machine that uh, the big yellow robot plucks out of the mold. In fact, this is a mold that we did in a previous episode. It's the dual mold where the platen spins and over molds rubber onto a polypropylene substrate. Actually, uh, these parts right here, you can see that. So I'm molding thousands of these and they're robotically assembled onto another item, which I can't talk about because it's uh, associated with a customer of mine. But I do have permission to show this part and the associated um, high-tech uh, conveying system that I've developed. So to do that, I've used the HO standard of conveying system, otherwise known as model trains. So you can see we got the CSX diesel engine here. Uh, this flatbed car is what the GoPro was sitting on. And I've got a bunch of other um, hopper cars, which I purchased actually straight from Alibaba, uh, sourced directly from China. So they were about 10 bucks each, I think, and I ordered 500 of them uh, so that we can, no, let's see, I, I ordered 100 of them so that we can have a run of 500 of these parts. And then the big, or the, the small red robot will pluck the parts out of the train car. And there's some schemes with the, with the train car and sensors, which we can take a look at the top side. And on the other side of this track, which is a huge loop, it runs the whole length of the shop, or about, about halfway back in the shop is where the big uh, yellow robot is loading these parts onto the train cars. The molding machine in the back molds these parts, I don't know, probably 20 times faster than the robots up here can, can grab it, manipulate it, and assemble it onto the larger uh, product that is, that is sold. So due to that, we need to collate the parts. You know, some people will stick them in waffle packs. Other people have, uh, you know, big uh, bread trays, you know, and, and uh, multiple trays. But it's hard for a robot to work with that kind of stuff. You can buy like an expensive, you know, uh, conveying system, but we also need to collate or, or uh, categorize or uh, load these parts up in like magazines of some port so we can specifically pull them out at a later point at a different location in the shop. So due to the budget needs, I wound up with uh, buying a uh, HO model train set. And I've got some footage of setting that up. All right, so I'm up on a little step ladder, and I'm out of the swing clearance of, of the red robot here. And so I guess what we want to do is back up our train. So I've preloaded all of these these little rubber parts. This part right here, which is molding in the out in the molding machine in the back. So I, I've uh, manually preloaded those, and again, the ultimately the big yellow robot's going to load all these parts into the cars out at the back of the of the shop. So I've got the robot controller here, and this is the uh, KUKA KR C4 compact controller for our red KUKA robot. And I've got a few inputs programmed to power the, the train itself using a, a, a homemade H-bridge amplifier. And we can talk about that maybe a little later in the episode, but an H-bridge basically changes uh, voltage polarity from a single uh, DC power supply. So if I flip, if I turn on output 11, then that activates uh, one configuration of the H-bridge to have positive voltage. And then if I turn off 11 and turn on 12, then the H-bridge circuit will flip the polarity and the train will drive backwards. So uh, in this setup, I've got, I had to program the uh, robot to control these train cars using a couple of optical sensors over here, uh, which are Keyence optical sensors. And effectively, the train car, because of 
of coupler slack in the cars themselves, which actually my friend John SL from YouTube, uh, he visited about four months ago, no, about six months ago, and, he, and I was telling him about doing the, the uh, model train conveying system, and he warned me about coupler slack, which is a thing that happens with actual real size trains as well, where the, the train cars basically don't hold their position perfectly, but they'll, they'll actually just stop due to the, to the tolerance of the slack in each coupler. So because of that, when the sensor sees that the train car is in the right spot and, and, the, and the, the little train locomotive shuts off, the cars keep drifting and then they're out of place. So the robot actually using the sensors and the H-bridge circuit, uh, which switches direction, uh, does a kind of a fine tuning operation. And then finally we have this, uh, this train stop, this bar on a DC motor. I can show you in a second. It's, it slowly drops down and drops between two cars and kind of locks the car position into place. So let's, uh, let's try it out. And then I've written a loop in the red robot to basically unload all of these cars. And for this experimental program, it's just gonna pull the part and then drop it into a bucket on the floor. Okay, well let's do it. Let's back up the train. So I'm gonna hit output 11 in teach mode and then hit the value and you'll see our train, oh, I got one derailed. Let me uh, go forward, <laughs> let me fix my car. Cause I wanna do a full train length trial run. So right now we've got 20 cars in one train and I've got a uh, diesel locomotive pulling and I've got a, a, a steam steam powered engine in the back pushing and the steam powered uh, locomotive actually pushes a little bit faster than the the diesel locomotive at the front of the train so by pushing with a little more velocity on the back we're, we're bunching up all of the cars so there's not as much of a slack problem so that that was one trick that actually my wife april recommended and yes i do play with trains with my wife <laughs> so uh, okay so let's move this this, this train down the track. Uh, oh, actually we're gonna back up. So I'm gonna hit 11 again. Output 11 flips polarity on the H bridge, which is, a tie, which is tied to the rails of the track. And we'll hit value and now we're gonna back up. All right, so we're gonna back our train all the way out to the load position or the start of the load position. And the, the dual cans detectors will detect uh, that this locomotive is taller than the cars and that'll be a trigger when it's when the robot sees that both Keyence detectors see something in front of it which is right now then it's going to say oh well, that's the train engine so don't pull parts but but go past the train engine and then start pulling parts out of the cars themselves again this is the the train stop with the crossing bar and then these are the two Keyence detectors which will detect when the Locomotive passes because there's there's two heights and the locomotive is taller than the than the freight cars Okay, I'm gonna hit play And then the red robot will go back to its To its home position. That's the beginning of the program and then it per it, it commanded the train to move forward and the two cans detectors detected that the locomotive went by and now it is detecting the first car and then the second car it backed up a little bit so change polarity on the H bridge to fine tune the location. And now the crossing bar is dropping, which will lock the train car into the right position so that the red robot can come along and pluck the parts out. Now in normal operation, the red robot is gonna do additional work to these parts and then hand them off to other robots to integrate it into a larger product. But for now, I'm just proving out that the train unloading operation works. So I've kind of skipped basically the rest of the production line. And we're just interested in how this, this red robot will grab the parts out of the train car. Like that. And then drop into a little, 
containing bucket and then grab the next one. And again, this, there'd be like a, a one and a half minute operation uh, after, uh, you know, instead of just dropping the parts, it would actually be assembling these parts. But I like to set up like a lights out operation where I've got five of these trains running uh, and that way we can load up 500 parts. Okay, so now the crossing guard is opening since we cleared out that first train car. And the little indicator on the cross guard, or the flag indicator, the optical flag was triggered. And then the red robot's gonna go back to its home position. Let me see if I can adjust the zoom while I'm holding the panic bar on the robot. I guess not. Okay, well anyway, so now we're advanced to the next car. The, the optical sensor, the blue cans detector, found the break in the cars and now we're dropping the the little crossing bar back down again to lock the this train car because we need to overcome all of the backlash from the uh, the couplers and the and the the 20 train cars in this stack here I'll pause and then we can zoom out so you can see the red robot doing its thing and then I'll hit the uh, again with the panic bar on the back my hands here I'm going to get hit the play button on the teach pendant and we're kind of manually playing through our, our program here. And uh, so this is a loop that is, is running in this program. So each car is an instance of the, uh, of, the, of the series of actions in a loop. And then outside of the loop is detecting the, uh, the next locomotive. So eventually I'll probably get fancy and do something called a do while loop and have a counter that, that counts from one to 20 and then it'll kick out and then look for the next train to come down the tracks and then uh, repeat this operation. But here I'm interested, uh, you know, does the stopping bar drop in correctly? Are the, is the Keyence detector triggering the right location of the corner of the train car so that we can see what's happening? Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. Okay. So then our robot goes. I think we're going to switch to automatic. So you can switch from teach mode to automatic within a program. You flip the key and then you just hit automatic here. But you got to be careful that you're not in the path of the robot because it's going to be going uh, if it cares if you're there or not. <laughs> All right. And then I'm going to hit the play button and you hold the play down until the robot uh, gets to its path, which it is now. Oh, huh, interesting. Oh, it did take the last part. Okay, so we advance to the next car. All right, and the robot's operating at 50% velocity now. We'll see how it does. Here we go. It's almost like a, a bird throwing away the, uh, the seeds out of the bird feeder it doesn't like. <laughs> Let me zoom in. There we go, and that's the last one. And it's going to go back to its home position. I just decided to have a home position somewhere in this loop. Because I think the robot likes to reset as, at its, its, uh, its uh, encoders at the home position. I could be wrong about that. But here we're uh, peak searching again. And as, as we get further into the line of cars, this back and forth peak searching is going to be more prevalent. And I basically just said move forward until the signal breaks, move back until the signal breaks, and then repeat, and then wait like half a second uh, before it, 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 so it allows the car to settle before it switches polarity. Now let's zoom in. And then hopefully on the cell phone you can see some of the other action. Okay, and then our train moves to the next uh, load position and it did that searching again, or video servoing, I think some people call it.
you get some footage of the uh, crossing gate dropping. Then we'll see the green indicator when the flag hits. And then our robot comes along and grabs its parts. So I'd like to get 100% success on this, even though that I missed that one. <laughs> and green's in the background working. Okay. And then our crossing bar comes back up. You should see the indicator flash green. There it goes. Then the train moves forward. So this indicator is just a uh, five volt power and ground and then the white wire in the middle uh, that white wire is the signal that that sends five volts to the robot and I have to bump it up to 24 volts using a, um, a solid state relay. All right, let's take a look at the cans. The little lights on the side indicate when it sees a train and then it stops and it did a little bit of a peak search there and drops down the crossing guard again. Then back there is our, our pusher unit, the, uh, the steam engine. I think it's a 232 steam engine. Uh-oh, we missed a car. Wonder what happened there. Huh. I guess it's not the end of the world if we miss a car. So I may have to refine the, um, the wait time. Uh, but the, the main important thing is that the robot always has a part in its gripper, which currently it's doing that. And again, this, these parts are going to be taken down to be integrated into a product. So this is just a fast forward proof of concept, but we already have at least one failure here by uh, missing a whole car. It may have something to do with, uh, I think I had 0.7 seconds. So if the, if the train car shot past too much and then it waited its, uh, its 0.7 seconds, it may have just seen, okay, here's the next car and it let the next car go by. And we're in the middle of the run right now so we've unloaded all these cars so this is kind of the most sloppy section of the train stack because uh, we're between the the steam locomotive and the diesel car which is about to go back through the bathroom in the shop let's see how our next operation goes here So the master plan is to use our HO scale part collating and conveying system, which uh, we just showed like the, the train running back and forth on. So this is gonna be the staging ground where the big yellow robot is going to pull the parts out of the R2D2 machine, which is this dual shot motor kit. There's some that came out. And this is, as you can see, a, a dual shot so the platen rotates. And every cycle we mold a polypropylene substrate and then a rubber over mold, which is done in this second injection unit back here. So this, the second step of our plan here is that Big Yellow is going to reach in through this 
opening in the side of the molding machine, and then and then great follows uh, as the molding machine triggers, and then it obviously it will pull out, and then the molding machine will go to the next step, and then Big Yellow is going to take that array of parts on suction cups over to a cutting station, which may be down on the table where these computers are. But it's going to cut out all the parts and then drop them into the little train car, which is going to be resident basically at that ledge right there. That's the, going to be the loading area. So if you, a future episode, we're going to talk about how we're going to build the, uh, the train car loading operation, pulling parts from the molding machine, using big yellow to load them into the train cars over there. And uh, right now the track is empty because it's all in the clean room. So let's go back in the clean room and see how we're unloading these train cars using the red robot. So it, it could be that I need to put like a black aperture, like a, like a opaque non-reflective slit in there. Uh, I had one, but I, I didn't use it. But maybe uh, we need to use it after all. But so far, every, every grip command has gotten a part, which is nice. And then the, the placement of these parts is going to be set by the fixture and the pitch of the dual shot mold that we looked at out in the, in the uh, main shop. So the, the actual uh, placement of these parts in the train cars should be really accurate because it's, it's actually controlled by the, by the cavities in the mold itself. There we did a little bit of a, of a back and forth servoing. Let's see if the, uh-oh, uh so the stop doesn't want to go in. I was also thinking of programming a little bit of a shimmy like that. Oh, but here we lost a part. So when that, when that guard dropped, we lost the first part and the second one. So, yeah, I'm trying to avoid the, there we got the third one. So this area, I think, needs some work. I need to work on either tuning that cans or adding the, um, optical slit, you know, to, to truncate the, the beam uh, so we get a more precise finding of the uh, corner of the, of the train car. Uh, but yeah, here's, uh, I guess this is the first two failures or one failure. I don't know what happened to the other part. It must have got flung out. Let's see how this Okay, so this one's kind of jammed up too. It could be that my tube is is too large in diameter. <laughs> yeah, I might have to get a smaller diameter plastic tube there, which probably means, uh, means a custom machining one. Or I could also custom turn a specific corralling profile. But right now that tube is hollow. You can see how it's hollow in the back. So I guess I need to work on that a little bit. Boy, I've been holding this cell phone too long. Let's see how this goes. Okay, and as we get closer to the actual diesel car, or not the diesel, but the steam engine, then things get better. <laughs> Oh, actually, my coupler is, is jammed up there. So this train coupler is messed up. You see how, how close that is? I think that was the issue. Yeah, something's not right there. All right, well, I'll have to keep track of that.
Well, it looks like we had a pretty successful unload there. I would say it was like a 95% success rate. Uh, some of it I figured out like this bad coupler, which I got to fix. And so let's send this train back down the track to make sure our track is in good working order. And you can take a kind of get a, a view of our uh, steam engine pusher here at the end. So I'm going to turn on the 12 or input number 12 of the robot. And our train will go down the track. I guess I'm more partial to steam engines than diesel engines. conveying system is still on track. And it's in this cellophane tube, uh, which the main purpose of the tube is to blow the, the clean air, the pressurized clean air from the clean room through the entire track tube, all the way down to the uh, loading station uh, where the big yellow robot is. I still need to do some cleaning up of the tunnel, I guess, uh, opening there in the wall uh, with a, a proper bezel and things around it. And we should see the steam engine coming at some point. And there it is. Keeping up the slack. Let's go out into the main shop. Alright, here we go. Here's the steam engine exiting the kitchen cupboard and going down this downgrade. I'm going to have to separate this track and add a higher voltage because these, uh, even with both engines, they can't lift these 20 cars up enough. Anyway, this open area is going to be where the big yellow robot loads the new parts off of the molds over there. Gotta fix this extra transparent ledge here. It's gonna catch parts and GoPros. There we go. There. Now we can stick it on. Yeah, that's the uh, conductor's view or engineer's view. Let's fire it back up. 